Thank you so much for coming to chat with me today. So why don't you get, um, explain a little bit about what the menopause is and what you do? Okay, well, me first of all. Yeah. Um, I'm a consultant gynaecologist um, and a subspecialist in reproductive medicine and endocrinology. I'm based at the Portland Hospital in London and I'm one of the very few gynaecologist in the UK who's also trained in functional medicine. So I take a, a dynamic approach to hormone replacement in the menopause with an anti-aging aspect and um, a compounding aspect if I have to, um, but also a very traditional aspect so that I keep everything safe in-house and, and holistic as much as I can. What do you find are the most common myths and misunderstandings about the menopause? Oh, there's loads, I know. there's loads. <laughs> Where do we start? Okay. Right, okay. Um, let me think. There is a belief that if you start your period early, you will finish your period early. That is completely untrue. There's absolutely no link between the age at which you start yeah. having periods and the finish, number one. Number yeah. two, all women have hot flushes. All women don't have hot flushes. About 25% of women will be lucky enough not to experience any flushing at all as they go through the menopause, but that doesn't mean they don't experience other menopausal symptoms, yeah, like as me. you know. Yeah. When you get your first hot flush, you still need to use contraception. <laughs> Awful as it is, and you know, because I do a lot of work in fertility, yeah. uh, I spent my life telling people how infertile they are. Yeah. But it is not impossible to become pregnant in the, about a four years before the menopause. It becomes virtually impossible about two years before your last period. Right. But up until then, women can easily be having uh, symptoms, but don't assume you can't get pregnant. How long does it last? Um, there's a, a group of women who will just say, oh, do you know what, I'll just stick it out They'll all go away within a year, it'll all be fine. But you know, the facts are that most women will have some menopausal symptoms for up to eight years after their last period. Yeah, I know, I've heard about this. You often talk about women, giving women a lifestyle plan. What does that mean? There is, you know, you might run TGP, get your HRT, think, okay, I'm sorted, and expect to be better yeah. in a while. Um, for a start, anybody who's starting HRT, it's not, overnight success mm -mm. you know as you know yeah. taking the hormones causes changes you can actually get uh, an exacerbation of your hot flushes in the first week or yeah. two so you've got to be advised that that can happen yeah. and hold on wait out for a couple of weeks in three weeks you should be sleeping better your hot flushes should be better six weeks you might feel a little bit more anxious but really it'll take six months to settle you down you might have some irregular bleeding in the first couple of months as yeah. well so it, that it's um, gearing your expectations for what to expect if you're on HRT, yeah. but also building in practical aspects about, you know, if you've got hot flushes, I don't, you know, I hope most girls that certainly that I know will have a fan in their bag. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, people find their own coping mechanisms, keeping yeah. you, your cotton sheets on and I keep yeah. your bedroom cool, yeah. layering, layering, we love layering, yeah. layering. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, maybe thinking of your yeah. makeup and, and, you know, Maybe you're seeing your hairdresser about your hair, looking at your diet. Yeah. Um, you know, taking trying to sugar, just, just take it, yeah, taking exactly a bit of time, time out if you can for you. I mean, yeah. the thing is, the menopause happens that, you know, tricky time in a lot of people's lives. They've Very. got elderly parents, relationship issues yeah. possibly, kids flying the nest, you know, career issues going on. It's a busy, busy time and possibly health problems themselves. Yeah. So the menopause on top of it is just like, the, you know, you just don't want to have the cherry no. on top, you don't no, want. I mean, but yeah. so, so it's a case of, you know, trying to get a bit of time for yourself. Increasing exercise is crucial, you know, if you get out there, get a bit of fresh air, get a bit of exercise, it will always help out flushes. And that's scientifically proven, yeah, you know? And it's feeling good about yourself because your confidence goes down, you're feeling more anxious. Put weight on. You put weight on. It goes round here. Although, now, Meg, it has to be said, apparently all the studies don't say that it's the menopause that puts the weight yeah, on. okay. But, you know, is it the menopause, it's this. the hormone changes, but if you feel dreadful energy, and you've no energy and you're not sleeping, yeah. 
you maybe will get into bad eating habits. You will, and then and then also I noticed lots of um, women that come to me to tell me that you know they're so exhausted, they just feel so down because they have no energy because they're not sleeping yeah. at night. That they just as soon as they get in, they pour themselves a glass of wine. Then it's a bottle of wine a night. Exactly. Before they know it, that can be like eight nine bottles of wine a week. Yeah. And as we know, it's just empty calories, so it's exactly. going to go on. And then they're in a catch twenty two. Oh yeah, yeah. Apart from <laughs> your liver, that. that just can pack up. But yeah, we don't worry about that. The other thing is that the fat distribution changes. So it's that oh. classic thing where you lose your waist and you get a belly. Yeah. Even if you've been sort of pretty skinny yeah. and a nice sort of apple shape Sweet, or yeah. even a lovely pear shape, suddenly you, you get, get this belly fat yeah. and it really upsets women. And it's because <laughs> of the change in the metabolism yeah. because the, the, the estrogen drops and so you put on weight and put on fat the way men put on fat. Right. And yeah, the, yeah. the good thing is that HRT does not make you put on weight. Yes. All right. Yeah. And if you are on HRT, you're not going to get that accumulation of visceral fat and tummy fat that is the main risk factor for cardiovascular disease as you get older. Right, yeah. So there's a good medical reason. We love this we? HRT, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> it's the way forward. <laughs> Alternative treatments. Mm. Uh, what are your thoughts on um, CBD? I don't know an awful lot. You're the one that's been educating <laughs> me about CBD. And I was sitting reading about it recently. I think it, it's, it looks really promising. Yeah. Um, it's obviously not for everything, but I think it's particularly for anxiety and sleeplessness. Yeah. Uh, there's a growing body of evidence from good scientific studies yeah. Um, that show that it's definitely significantly beneficial. Um, it's getting good quality CBD oil out there um, and making sure it's prescribed in the right way for the yeah. right people. Yeah. But I think it sounds really exciting, actually. It is. Uh, for a lot of things, for aches and pains as aches well. Aches and pains, yeah, everything. Yeah. Foggy brain, aches and pain. Yeah. I mean, it seems to be it seems to be working with everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you take it the and it goes into your cannabinoids and then the receptors just take it to wherever it needs to be. Yeah. So, yeah, so a yeah, couple no, of little drops. Any alternative, because, you know, hormone replacement, fantastic, it works. But there's still some women out there who are unable to take hormone replacement. No, know, so yeah. things like acupuncture, CBD, CBD oil, all, this, yeah. all those things, they're all part of, of yeah. a great, very useful package that, you know, hopefully in time will expand. What do women need to say to their GP to get the right test? The NICE guidelines and the British Menopause Society, uh, I think two years ago, revised the guidelines and the NICE, NICE came out with their first guidelines for management of the menopause, which is wonderful. It's yeah. a great start. Yeah. We just need to build on it a bit. But the fact is that within the NHS, um, if you're over the age of 45, your GP won't do any tests on you if you present with hot flushes and if your periods are a bit irregular he's going to say right or she or she's going to say this is your menopause yeah are you interested in taking hrt hopefully you'll have that conversation she, they will have that conversation with you so it's only the women who are under 45 who uh, are likely to have hormone tests done now i must admit you have to consider the economic implications of testing yeah. everybody's hormones and we know that you can develop menopausal symptoms even when your hormones are absolutely fine so it's a very there's not an absolute test for the menopause is the answer yeah. if a specialist sees you like me yeah. um i do a different group of blood work uh, that isn't available in the nhs yeah. and one test in particular your amh which is not possible yeah. traditionally used these days as a fertility a sort of index of how many eggs you've got left if you're having ivf treatment but it's also really useful to see whether you're at the start of this process in the middle or you're actually towards the end the fsh level is the one that's more often tested by regular practitioners, but FSH bounces around yeah, all over the place yeah. for years, um, and it's very inaccurate. So it's only by taking the combination of what's happening with your ovaries, I also look at your adrenal gland, look at your male hormone levels, because the metabolism of those changes as you progress from yeah. start to finish. And of course, everybody's slightly different. Uh, the journey different, is different yeah. for everyone. So it's a case of trying to get the best fit for where you are at that time. And it's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. For some women, their GP might put them on one tablet, they'll get it right first time, feel great, and that'll be them. Yeah. 
but actually it's not the case for a lot of women you know they'll find they're a bit better or they have side effects with one thing and if there's a little bit of trial and error that ah, you need okay, to go so and uh, the, the the big sort of message is if your GP has tried if you're having symptoms or side effects um, it's not doing what you feel it, you, you, it should do, yeah. then please ask for a referral to a menopause specialist. There are increasing numbers of menopause specialists around um, in the NHS and the private sector, and we're more used to dealing with tricky cases. Yeah. It's so lovely to have you here today, and thank you for coming. Absolutely, pleasure to be right. here.